Farmer Mike, live from Ophelia's Blue Vine Farm. Man, it's hot today. <laughs> it's so hot today. So hot today. But we got, we have some work we need to do. For a couple hours inside the greenhouse. Elijah's outside doing some watering and whatnot, and I'm moving some water from one big container to another. I think I'll enjoy enjoy some nice grapes. Mmm. Ooh, love my knees. So these grapes I planted in here as far as food, but also um, they're cooling the greenhouse, cleaning the air providing a shelter. Have you ever noticed if you're in the woods, it's a lot cooler than being out in direct sun. Um, and so this basically helps provide a shade, helps keep it cooler in here, helps keep the, the refrigeration, the compressors from working as hard. A lot of people having, um, having a lot of issues right now with um, refrigerators going out, coolers going, air conditioning going out because it's so hot because we have these extreme temperatures. This particular vine, um, I planted many years ago. We haven't sprayed with anything. It was bred by the USDA for organic purposes. I go into that on one of the many videos I have on our YouTube channel, Ophelia's Blue Vine Farm on YouTube. Close to, well, actually over 305 videos all dedicated to urban farming where I talk about these particular grape vines. And the other one is a, is a purple on the other side. And so, mm, you would like your experience Come on down Saturday, and you can pick your very own grapes. Mm. We we'll give these away. Just the experience. Uh, but everything else <laughs> will come at a cost. And this is a cost associated to real food. A lot of you guys have already seen my videos, real food versus fake food. And uh, to really uh, to do this the best possible way takes a whole lot of work. Um, we're going to go out to the big farm maybe an hour or so, maybe two hours. Um, maybe we'll do another video on there on watermelon, pull some watermelon today. Temperatures are going to cool off. Um, so we're about 80, a little over 83 days, about 82, 83 days from when we first um, put those transplants, put those yellow meats in the, in the ground. So that field, those watermelons are ready. I just haven't had a chance to get to them yet um, and, uh, and pull those with a very keen eye. Uh, got a can of a sliced beef. Um, this contains a bioengineered food ingredient from Spain, and also consuming the product can expose you to chemicals including lead, which are known in the state of Kansas, California, California to cause cancer, birth defect, reproductive harm. So I don't want you to get any of that. I don't want your, your kids to get any of that. There's the can right there. You can read for itself. And, um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys, you know, don't get it, and uh, and that's okay. <laughs> that, that's okay. You know, we want people to be healthy, people to be safe. Across the street from me is a school. I don't know if you can see right there. So that's Wendell Phillips School. That was a school that's closed down. So I always envision to be able to do some programming to teach kids about real food versus fake food, and um, and and that is no longer a school. But um, but I'm still I'm still going forward with the with mission and a vision letting people know what real food tastes like real tomato taste ah man if you don't get off that phone we got work to do <laughs> i'm just teasing no no i'm just teasing go ahead go ahead go ahead elijah's over here <laughs> i don't know if you can see watering and uh and let me go in here yeah so we're late in the season we don't see a lot of problems and whatnot. Oh, look at these grapes right here. Oh, Farmer Mike, don't do it. Don't hurt them. Oh, I think I may have to hurt them real quick. I think we may have to. Mmm. Mmm. I think that's a Concord. That has seeds in it. I don't know if you can see. It's good for you. It's healthy for you. Um, great seed. <laughs> really? Hold on. Hold on. Man, you're not supposed to be picking the supply and what is that that's a big one too really really are you 
Are you where? Where did you get that from? Uh, I think it's like it was over here. Yeah. So this is uh, these are heirloom, and uh, oh man. And so really, that's how I designed all this as a as a food for us, really, to give people the experience to come out and we'll grow so much stuff and uh, buy so much local stuff and bring so much other local stuff in, but to give people the experience to pick some real food, some real fruit, you know, a vine ripened tomato, and. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and indulge in this. Mmm. Mmm. It's real sunny. I don't know if you can see that. Mmm. Very complex. Got some corn in here. Some squash. There's some watermelon down there too. Some okra. Some squash. Where's the okra at? Okra. Um, mm. this okra is actually a fine street seed crop hope everybody can hear me okay thumbs up in the comment section if you can hear me okay got a new phone and um corn a lot of this is um all this is looking good. Um, usually, don't water this uh, late in the day, but we really had no choice. And um, and sometimes, you know, you can break your own rules. It's just about adapting in a certain situation. You have to say, well, um, how harmful is it going to be to the plant? Is it going to uh, do more harm than it than it's going to help? And for me, this, this tight spacing. We've got good airflow, um, good diversity out here, um, and it's early enough to where this can dry off. The main thing, when it's tight like this, then it's, you can get a lot of disease pressure, and we've got some, but that's because of these plants are, are heirloom plants, and they're finicky, a little bit finicky to grow. So I'm not worried about that. We're going to water that, and uh, then we're going to go into a couple of days of cool weather. Let me go ahead and show you some of the okra we have right here. And um, so this right here is about the size, about the size that you want it. Um, and we don't want it to get too big because then it would get uh, hard on you. And I could pick this off right now or I could leave it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it simply because this is a, a seed crop for me. And when they get big like this, it's okay because we're gonna use this. Let me see. We're gonna use this to, um, we're gonna use that for seed next year. And then we'll even sell a lot of this seed. This is true vines, acclimated to Vine Street, Kansas City, Missouri. And um, so, you know, this is, this is something that's just going to have some really good genetics. Not just good genetics, great genetics. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to show you what we did on these sunflowers from last year that dwarfed me. I'm six feet three inches tall, and these are probably 13 feet behind me. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful in every way. And you can use that for um, cut flower arrangements, the birds. Eventually, we'll, um, as the seed head matures, they will come. If you don't take those heads off, the heads of those off and save those sunflower seeds, the birds will delight and, uh, and take those and nibble away. And let me show you. Right inside here. So, so this is about the time, oh, there goes the movie, that I would cut this off. So I would cut this off right here with some scissors. And then right in.